What's up, sexy? I'm Lexi, and welcome to Lex. What's up, sexy? I'm Lexi, and welcome to Lexplanations, the show where we look at a bunch of IT fails and ask, how the hell did you do that? If you're new to computers, IT, or tech, or ever just wanted IT memes explained to you, or if you've got all your battle scars from doing help desk and you, and you just want to cry a lot, you've come to the right place. Let's get started. A little accident. Look, accidents are fine. We all make them. Let's just see what you. Oh, 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 oh. That's expensive. You will not be doing a computer today. This is a server motherboard. You can tell that it's a server motherboard by the way that it is. Actually, you can tell this because there are two CPU sockets. And for the uninitiated, the CPU is the thing that does all the math. Like anyone else, gets very hot and flustered when it does a lot of math. So we have to cool it with fans, which is not something I've ever tried while doing math, and I don't intend to. Anyways. You have to put CPUs in sockets. The sockets hold the CPU down very tightly and then you squish a bunch of coolers on top and that makes the CPUs not liquefy, which is always good. You don't want your computer to be liquid. The sockets can sometimes be very difficult to open, especially if you uh, open them from the wrong side or something like that. I don't know what happened here. But as you can see, there's a tab on one side and a little hook on the other. And one of these either was pulled up by the thermal paste too tight or old or whatever. But yeah, if, if, you, if you don't actually open the socket and just pull up on it, you'll rip it straight off the board and you will you will no longer have a server. No! Network cables! No! A absolutely not! So there's a very big distance in IT between what you can do and what you should do. What works and what won't get you shot. Th this, this falls right about here on that scale. Ethernet wires, internet cables, whatever you want to call them, are made up of eight wires. A and you can get away with two. This does not mean that you should take an eight wire ethernet cable, divide it into two different ports, use four wires from each cable and run that somewhere else. Because whatever you plug that into on the other end is going to look at it and have an existential crisis and vomit its firmware out of its butt. This is, this is how you give a switch an aneurysm. CD burner malfunctions spectacularly and spat a disc out into the inside of this laptop. First off, I have never seen a qu quasimo? Cosimo? Cosimo sounds like a really delicious croissant, like an ultra croissant. Also, this thing is really old. Look at all those just delicious buttons. Not, laptops don't have enough buttons anymore. But the reason I find this fascinating is CD burners and CD drives are sort of modular. For most laptops at the time that CD drives were popular, you could pull them out except for Apple because they hate you. But they're, they're sheet metal enclosures and I have something like this and this is metal. Like, you can't get a disc through the back of this. And somehow, of an extremely determined CD just screamed freedom and yeeted itself onto the inside of the computer, which is a testament to CD drive engineering at the time because this is such a rare occurrence for something as big as a CD and spinning that fast. So well done, tiny CD. You didn't get very far, but you did make it to Reddit. My soldering iron. You know, I mentioned it before, but they make a medication to fix that. PG-13 jokes aside, this is impressive because soldering irons are designed to get very hot. Their entire job is to melt metal onto other metal so that electronics can talk to each other through squishy molten metal. Look, don't judge, we all have our things, but according to Google, soldering irons are designed to reach a temperature range of 200 to 480 degrees Celsius, which is 392 to 896 degrees freedom units. So you've taken something that is designed to go up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit and you have melted it. Are you proud of yourself? Cause you should be. I don't know what you were doing, but it's something I wouldn't do and that's impressive enough. This graphics card got mangled and tore the PCI socket off the board and only left the bare pins. So inside a computer, if you don't take out the graphics card, I'm not saying that's what happened here. And just, this is a word of caution. When you ship a computer or you move it or something like that, you should, you should take out the graphics card or support it in some way. This is the motherboard and the, the GPU goes into it at like T angle. And then there's just one or two tiny little screws that attach it to the back of the case. So you have this entire big heavy board and they're getting heavier every year, supported by two tiny screws and a, a locking connector. When you shake that, the entire weight of that graphics card is on that row of pins. And uh, I don't know if this just got pulled out or it got jostled in shipping or something. That'll rip them pins right out. And I've seen ones where the entire socket just gets broken off the motherboard because it's not designed for anything more than just hold it in place and receive the data. When sockets like these were beginning to be designed, uh, 
GPUs were tiny and they've gotten bigger and more powerful. They're great, but good lord, they are not structurally engineered for this. I actually like, I've seen a, a few tiny cases where uh, the motherboard actually sits on the on the bottom and then the GPU slots into it from the top, which I actually think is, is a better way to do it overall, especially if you're going to ship the case, not guaranteeing it's going to stay upright, but if you're going to move it yourself and you know it's going to stay in that orientation, as you draw so that you're just, you're going up and down and you're bracing against the case instead of this, you know, the entire weight of the GPU being on that socket. Just, just be careful, you know, when you're, when you're shipping stuff and moving stuff. Computers are still fragile. Beautiful. Like everyone watching this video, especially if you're subscribed. Anyway, let's see what's so, uh, beautiful. Well, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. I'm torn on this. I really like the trend of people cannibalizing gaming laptops to make mini PCs and stuff like that. The death of laptops is heat. Some fantastic hardware lives inside of, of laptops that just aren't properly cooled. I have, a, I have a Blade 14 that I'm actually running on this off of right now. And most of the thing is a giant vapor chamber. And for that reason, it runs really well. But not all laptops are like that. So I, I can't recommend this particular cooling setup. <laughs> in which you take a full-size CPU cooler and uh, suspend it? <laughs> you, why, hanging it over wires with the heat? But I, uh, I don't know, but um, something like... <laughs> I just saw the surge protector at the bottom. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, okay. I see what you're doing. Well, you can do this. Um, but there, there are better ways to go about it. My point being, I applaud you reusing the components. I do not endorse the electrical fire you have created. And if you have a gaming laptop, especially one that's thin and light, make sure you cool it properly and don't play games on your bed. That's what we're taking away from this today. Oh God, the surge protector. Oh, Jesus Christ. This VGA port. It, it seems like it's upside down. Is it, is it upside down? Hang on, there's a line right there. Yeah, it is upside down. Yeah, so it's a trapezoid and, and the top of the trapezoid, the wider part is supposed to be at the top of the port. Motherboards are mounted from the other direction where the direction that you can see the IO shield text is upside down. The, the, the entire thing is, how did you do that? Because I thought that was attached. You can see the slope right there. Oh God, what, what have you done? The reason this is important is when you go to plug it in, all the pins are going to be misoriented. You can't even use this port. Oh my God. Oh, how did you do that? My speakers made some really gnarly sounds last night. This is what the amp looks like now. I smell a fire. I'm impressed. I'm genuinely, I don't know enough about the inside of audio hardware, but I know that if you put enough load on something, it, it, it will burn up. And you clearly dumped enough voltage into the wrong spot in order for it to get very angry. 2010 MacBook USB-C mod. No, this is cool. No, this is, this. Is, I'm, I'm on board with this. This is cool. USB-C spec is impressive. Like 100 watts is no big deal. And I, I saw somewhere that they were testing like a version that was gonna go up to 240 uh, watts. But if you can't find that MagSafe cord anymore, or you know, they're disintegrating because they were that weird rubbery texture. <laughs> if you can mod it to USB-C and just used an off the shelf 65 watt power adapter, go for it. Do you see it? Not usually, but that's because I'm legally blind. Saw this on Facebook Marketplace. I'll give the audience a moment. I'll give all the IT people another moment just to get that, you know, breathe deeply. Just let the pain course through you. It'll, it'll run off just like everything else. So if you look out the left side, of your vision, you will see two slots where the card should be mounted and two slots where the card is actually mounted. <laughs> and he's looking a little bit drunk. Just a little, just a little not quite there. I don't know if he just didn't have any screws or lost the screws or put the screws in the wrong place. I actually uh, once managed a place uh, that had a bunch of rack mount servers and uh, server racks operate in a system called use. Like you get a 12 U rack, which can hold 12 units of computer. And the, the, the unit screws are in groups of three and you have to, you have to, you know, double check whenever you're installing something, just make sure you're on the right U because the fancier ones have lines to tell you exactly where each one is. Uh, but cheaper ones don't. And honestly, you don't really need the lines. They're just kind of a luxury thing. However, when I walked in, the last person had not followed that at all. So there were servers mismounted all over the place, leaving all these weird gaps. And like we had 48U 
racks where only 35 of the units were occupied because they had rounded. Some of the stuff was mounted literally crooked. Uh, I don't know how you can mount something that's $5,000 and when you install it, be that careless, but to each their own. It was not to my spec though, so I fixed it violently. And it looks like that same person apparently had a gaming rig and put it up for sale on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I really hope that uh, GPU slot is okay. <laughs> because I'm not. Walked into the office, said to myself, ooh, an adapter. Went to pocket it and noticed this. First off, I just have to explain to the non-IT folks how much joy there is in finding a specific adapter that you don't see a lot of. RJ45 couplers for me were like the gold mine because uh, one of the places I worked was, was a pre-war building that had so few network drops and just getting network lines to around the office stuff was always a challenge, even with super long ethernet cables. I wouldn't recommend always using them, but occasionally for a, a meeting or something you had to set up for a day, they are indispensable. But let's take a look at what adapter they pocket up. Oh, that is a DVI. <laughs> so that this is a DVI adapter. It's supposed to be an even grid of three rows of pins. That's <laughs> not an even grid on the left. That is that is, is an abused grid. What even happened? It looks like it got pulled really hard because the, the sheet metal on the left is actually pulled out. So it was actually attached to something else and it was either yanked or stepped on <laughs> and broke all of those gates for all of the, the pins. Good lord, that's impressive, but also a little bit sad because the other end of that is screwed. The other end of that is all these you know fragile pins and they are broken off. I guarantee it. I mixed up screws, putting my new Nintendo 3DS back together. When you are taking something apart, especially electronics, uh, I know HP laptops are really bad about this. The, the screws from front to back are sometimes different lengths, either because the, the laptop will rake forward or back. Label them. I actually, I used to have a, a magnetic dry erase board that ThinkGeek used to sell uh, before they went on a business, rest in peace. And you could write what each screw was. Now I just use post-it notes and like a little bit of that blue painter's tape and just say, these are the long screws for this side um, or uh, ingredient cups. You can get them at the Dollar Tree and and they're they're about yay big. I'm sure I have some somewhere, but if you see, if you're at any of the Lego streams, you'll see them. They're about one inch by two inch and they have a little lid and they're for individual ingredients for spices or refrigerated ingredients and stuff like that. When you cook, they are great for a bunch of screws. Can you get like 10 in a pack? And you can say, okay, these these screws are this, this, and you can come back to a project months later and have all your screws like neatly organized and put everything back together. My school PC. I'm not even going to start on how much damage comes from education computers, but let's take a look. I have taken a look. I wish I hadn't. Oh dear God. That that's it. okay. That is a compact flash slot. Compact flash was the precursor to SD and had a bunch of pins in the connector and a bunch of slots on the actual card. So the card didn't have anything that was bendy and you could easily damage. And they were very popular for photo photography and they are still used uh, for uh, Windows 95 and Windows 98 PC builds because they're easier to get and more reliable than IDE hard drives. However, that did mean that the reader for these has a bunch of pins sticking out. Somebody, <laughs> somebody <laughs> apparently raked all of the pins with, with a pen or a screwdriver or something, and we will find them. <laughs> For legal reasons, that was a joke. For moral reasons, it was not. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Computers should have the right to self-defense. Tech in schools be like, what did I just say about education? This is again, one of those slim laptop style drives where you press the button, it ejects a little tiny bit out and you pull it out manually. Uh, and if you keep pulling it out and you keep pulling it out, it, it just comes out. <laughs> It's very hard to get back in. It will still probably work as long as you don't touch it. Um, but you are essentially making a plastic buzzsaw, which I wouldn't count among the world's most intelligent ideas. Most fun ideas, maybe, but fun and intelligence sometimes don't mix. Not saying you shouldn't ever do something stupid, just, just weigh your options. Like, is this worth it to do something stupid? Sometimes it is. And finally, a cable pulled out of food service. Look at it. Soak in its glory. Worship it because it's probably alive and then don't think about it anymore. Food service cabling is a special kind of awful. Through no fault of this food service industry, it is simply electronics and food and the two things do not mix. For lack of a better word, I squidged a router off of a wall that had been mounted above a deep fryer that had a layer of deep fried fish gelatin completely encasing it. 
by about a half inch on all sides. It was one of the most disgusting things I've ever held, and it still worked, which was terrifying, but impressive. Don't mount stuff above or around your stoves or deep fryers or anything like that when possible. I know it's not always possible. I know there's receipt printers and ticket printers and stuff like that in, in kitchens. Run ethernet as best you can. Use outdoor cable fittings when you can. You're still gonna end up with gelatinous ethernet cables. <laughs> and it's just, oh, I can still feel it. Anyways, that wraps up this first episode of The Lexplanations. We're gonna try a few of these with hardware gore, software gore, tech support gore. Thank you to everybody that's subscribed. We're almost at 100K, holy hell. A special thank you to all of our patrons and YouTube channel members. Have an absolutely victorious day tomorrow. Stay safe, stay awesome, make more stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video.